and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Musician, a coaching service podcast and blog preparing today's musician for tomorrow's realities. This is TEM 234 titled Convince the Converted. Thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hitz Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. First of all, shout out to all of you who are Patreon patrons. Thank you so much. You can become one by going to patreon.com slash TEM podcast. I am about to post this month's TEM report. I got a lot to report since launching the Hits Academy, which has actually been quite successful. I'm learning a lot. There's been a lot of good moves. There's been a lot of moves I figured out almost right away after I made them that I could have done a little bit differently. The TEM report is a monthly look into my successes and failures and everything that kind of lands in between and kind of keeps you in the loop also on all things TEM. And I have been... uh, giving a shout out to a musician at the beginning of every episode of late. And this one is actually going to be a general one, which is just a shout out to the return of live music. On July 10th, I get to see the Boston Symphony Orchestra at Tanglewood play Beethoven 5 and see Emmanuel Axe do the Beethoven Emperor Concerto. I'm so excited. I last summer was the first summer since I was born. Every summer since 1975, I have seen concerts at Tanglewood. And last summer, there, of course, were none. So uh, lots of people's streaks were snapped, but that place is like spiritual to me. I can't wait. And then on August 2nd, I'm going to get to see uh, Nashville staple, the infamous String Dusters down in Nashville, followed by Two Nights of Fish. I'm so excited about all of it that I could cry. So uh, here's a shout out to everybody who's returning to performing who is returning to seeing live music. Uh, Boy, have we missed you. TEM 234, convince the converted. You need to convince people who already value what you offer that you are who they should go with and resist the temptation to try to convince someone um, that needs convincing that what you offer is valuable. I'm not trying to convince the vast majority of you to hire me for TEM coaching, for example. I'm only trying to convince those of you who either have or would pay for one-on-one business coaching that I am the best fit for you. Not that I won't get the occasional person who is a first-time coaching customer, like first-time not me, but first-time just with any kind of coaching other than private lessons, but that is much more rare than finding someone who is already on board with paying for such services. The problem is I can't simultaneously cater to pre-existing coaching customers who simply haven't hired me yet and people who need to be convinced of coaching's value to them before they hire anyone, let alone me. At least I can't simultaneously cater to both of those effectively. And that's because they have very different needs. If you haven't worked with other business coaches, uh, excuse me, if you have worked with other business coaches, but not me yet, the issue is trust. You don't yet trust that I can help you in a tangible way that others can't. That trust is earned by me continuing to show up here and ideally helping that potential customer a number of times via TEM content. If they are the type of person who hires a coach and I keep helping them with TEM content, eventually, if the help I'm providing is good enough, they will more than likely sign up for one-on-one coachings from me. If you've never worked with any business coach, the primary issue is not trusting me, but you becoming the type of person who sees value in a business coaching to the point where you actually take out your credit card. Those are fundamentally different issues that can't be addressed, as I already said, simultaneously with the same marketing or content. And it's pretty obvious which one of those is easier to achieve, right? It is much easier for me to build trust over time with the first group than it is to convince the second group that business coaching is valuable in the first place and then convince them that I am the one to hire. 
So for best results, always focus on convincing the converted that you are the best option rather than working on changing the worldview of the unconverted. And that, I'll be honest, can be easier said than done sometimes. There's a part of me who says, boy, if more musicians understood that a business coaching, and I'm not trying to sell you on mine, just period, just someone who has experience with not just doing it, but teaching it, if you were to bounce your ideas off of someone like that, how valuable it would be when there, I know so many musicians who have taken hundreds of private lessons on their instrument in their lives and have never had even a single hour of someone who could help them with the business side. And to me, there's just, if you already are used to that master apprentice, uh, not that I uh, refer to any of my clients as apprentice, but you understand it's a figure of speech. The, the master apprentice relationship of one on one with like learning and you know direct one on one communication with a teacher, then it seems like it's a really short walk to going from private lessons from the time you were 10 to one to five or regular business coachings. There's a lot of people who don't make that leap and I can either try and convince them to make that leap and then that I'm who they should leap to. That happens just not that often or I can convince the people already there that hey, maybe I'm the best fit for you and I'm telling you that's the one that ends up with the most impact and with the most income. Next, I wanted to share a quick excerpt from uh, my upcoming book, which will be the next one from TEM Books. It, the, the title is still to be determined, uh, but this is a section of it. It is called Avoiding the Sunk Cost Fallacy. What is the sunk cost fallacy and why is it so easy to fall for it? According to the Decision Lab, Quote, the sunk cost fallacy describes our tendency to follow through on an endeavor if we have already invested time, effort, or money into it, whether or not the current costs outweigh the benefits. They then illustrate it with a perfect example. Quote, imagine that you bought a concert ticket a few weeks ago for $50. On the day of the concert, you feel sick and it's raining outside. You know the traffic will be worse because of the rain and that you risk getting sicker by going to the concert. Despite the fact that it seems as though the current drawbacks outweigh the benefits, why are you still likely to choose to go to the concert? Now, I'll admit that under normal circumstances, I would totally still go to this concert and would use whatever I needed to talk myself into it. That is not really a problem when we are talking about one evening of our lives. It is a big problem, however, when talking about big career and life decisions. For example, if you are two years into a three-year doctorate degree and over time have realized that you no longer have the career or life aspirations that led you to starting the degree in the first place, it can feel much easier to finish the degree while taking on thousands more in student debt than quitting only one year away from the finish line. This is because of the sunk cost fallacy. And by the way, you don't only, going off script here, you don't only lose money, you also lose an entire year of your life that you're not starting the next thing and either finding your true calling or actually executing on it. So there's, there's actually a lot of expenses moving forward there, and yet it's a lot easier to just to finish the degree. Okay, back to the script. The same goes for continuing in a chamber ensemble you founded, but that is no longer aligned with your artistic goals, staying in a teaching job you don't enjoy, but that required a multi-year certification process to get, or continuing a private teaching studio you took years to build, even though you no longer really enjoy teaching. A big part of the problem is other people. You won't ever need to explain away finishing the aforementioned doctorate degree to anyone, but you will need to do that to a number of well-intentioned people if you abort with only a year remaining. But no matter what got you on your current path, if it's no longer heading in the direction you wish to go in, you must ignore sunk costs when deciding what your next move should be. And that doesn't mean you always abort. When there are family members depending on your current path or other such life circumstances uh, at play, there's a lot that goes into decisions like quitting something with a steady income. 
but we will make the best decision for ourselves and the people in our lives when we ignore the resources it took to get us to this point and only look at what should happen next. So that was a quick excerpt from my upcoming book from TEM Books, and I will share the release date and the actual title uh, with you as soon as I know it, but it looks like it will be September or October, and that's going to be available to uh, download directly from uh, TEM Books, but also uh, will be available on the Kindle as well. And I've also been ending every episode with a quote, and this quote is courtesy of Miles Davis. My future starts when I wake up every morning. Every day I find something creative to do with my life. Uh, this quote reminded me that creativity is a muscle. Use it and that muscle gets stronger. Don't use it and it gets weaker. Make sure you are making art that requires you to be creative and not just checking the boxes or your creativity will atrophy. Thank you to everyone for listening, subscribing, leaving a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. I see you, everybody who did that, or whenever, wherever you get TEM, and simply for your attention, the most valuable commodity any of us have to give. TEM is produced by Will Houchin and is a part of the Pedal Note Media Podcast Network. The theme music for TEM is played by Ben Barron, Rich Kelly, Daniel LaPel, and myself, Andrew Hitz. For show notes, the TEM blog, and to learn more about TEM coaching, please visit tem.fm. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, that's going to do it for another episode of The Entrepreneurial Musician. 